What's going on YouTube? It's Mike here. Today guys in this video, I'm going to be reviewing my top 10 iOS 7 Cydia tweaks for 2014. So here today guys, in this video, I'm going to be showcasing my top 10 iOS 7 Cydia tweaks for 2014. As you guys know, I'm always showcasing some of my favorite tweaks in iOS 7, but today, instead of five, six, or even seven tweaks, I'm gonna show you my 10 most recent and best. These are all different tweaks that I've got together for this video that I wanna show you today. So the first one is a tweak called BioProtect, and I'm actually gonna have to take my phone out of the dock for this one to show you, never before. Um, so I'm actually going to show you exactly how this works right now. Pretty much as you can see, I'll just go into settings, for example, and you can see this little dialog pops up, and it says BioProtect, and it's got a little flashing Touch ID fingerprint sensor with the gold ring, of course, because got, I have the gold iPhone 5S. It says, please authenticate using your fingerprint. So I just put my finger there, you could see it open settings with ease. So that's pretty much what BioProtect is. It basically locks up any of your apps and it's that simple. For example, if I wanna go into messages, I just drop my fingerprint there and you could see it works seamlessly just like that. Very cool, you can lock any of the apps that you want. It's very fast, very efficient. It works the same as it would with the lock screen touch ID option and there is a preference pane in settings, of course, as soon as you download BioProtect. So you can actually choose what you want apps, folders, settings pane, flip switches, control center items, and then a ton of off and on options for some other things around iOS. So it pretty much doesn't stop in terms of when you want to protect anything on your iPhone. And like I said, very well working. You can even lock up as much as multitasking. That's how cool it is. So definitely worth it. It protects everything. For example, even Twitter, it just works. Very cool tweak. So the next tweak I want to show you is a tweak called Cylinder. And as you can see here, the way I'm moving my pages kind of reminds you of a barrel tweak that I used quite some time ago. Well, Cylinder is here, which is a completely different take, although very similar to the same thing as barrel, for example. Um, but it's got quite a few new types of gestures. And not gestures, but I guess you could say page swipes. So I could go here to effects, and as you can see, there are a ton here currently. I think I have, yeah, cube inside enabled, which are the, the this is like all the defaults for barrel. There are many, many options. So for example, I'll just put a cool one on here. So double door, for example. So we'll go ahead and check that out. So you can see right there, kind of weird looking. And some of them are in beta and a little bit weird here and there, but you can play around with it a little bit and find your favorite one. We'll do another one, we'll do chomp, for example. You can see there. Well, I think this is actually putting all of them together, which is kind of weird too. So I'll go ahead and I'll actually deselect all of these. And there you can see now Chomp is looking a lot better. I actually realized what I did there. What happened was is I had three enabled at once, which you can actually do, which I guess is kind of cool with Cylinder. It lets you actually choose multiple different types of page gestures and movements. So I can select more than one and it could just kind of cooperate to kind of give a cool effect, but you want to be careful because you could mess it up. This one right here, as you can see, it's making my icons bigger. You'll probably see as I do it slower there, it's called bubble. So it's just cool stuff like that. So it's basically barrel number two. I know there was a barrel two that actually did come out and was quickly removed, but this is kind of like barrel two, for example. It just adds a lot of gestures. You can have multiple ones on at once. So pretty cool, worth the check out if you're getting tired of Barrel's gestures. That's a weird one right there. So the next tweak I'm gonna show you is a tweak called Swipey. Now this is a lock screen quick launch tweak and I'll go ahead and lock up my screen here just to show you exactly how it works. You can see I'm on the beautiful IntelliScreen X screen and I'll actually just go ahead and show you exactly what it does. You can see there I swiped into Tweetbot, I can swipe into Instagram, Messages, Phone, Music, Spotify, you name it. And actually right on the end there is my actual IntelliScreen type of preference pane. So they are still included if you are an IntelliScreen X user. But however, you can see exactly what that does there. It's basically a lock screen quick launch, a lot like what Adam or JellyLock7 would do. So I could just go here to Tweetbot and then would have me enter my passcode. And that's simple. It would just launch Tweetbot right from the lock screen. And you could do that with up to six different applications. There is a preference pane in settings, as you can see here. And there are six different apps, like I said, that you can actually enable at a time. It could be user installed, it could be Apple installed, you name it, whatever you want to use. The next tweak that I'm going to show you is a tweak called Jester, which I guess is kind of like the root of gesture. And that's exactly what it does. Basically, it's gestures for a quick app launch. Now, using Activator, because there is going to be no app downloaded or any preference pane in settings downloaded, it's going to work right with Activator, so you'll have to go through Activator's settings pane to actually enable it. You see, I double tapped on my clock there, and when I draw this little check mark, 
it goes ahead and opens Tweetbot for me. Now, how cool is that? So it's it's that simple, really. It doesn't go further than that. Basically, you choose an app, you assign it a gesture, and then right after that, you can go ahead and use those gestures to open different apps. So I'll do another gesture. So let's go M. You can see I enabled it to open my messages. So for, let's say, example, I want to go into App Store, and I want to set a brand new gesture here. I will simply double tap on the top, and I will put a little up sign since I can't do like an A. I couldn't you know, make it too. So now when I double tap here, I go A. You can see just like that, it took me into the app store. This will work for any app as well. So pretty cool tweak. So the next tweak I'm going to show you is actually one of my personal favorites. And this is iTunes Radio Unlimited. Now, I'm pretty much stating exactly what it does here. And sorry, Apple, but someone was going to develop this tweak. I'm sure you knew it. Basically, what this does is this offers you iTunes Radio Unlimited. It's almost like if you were using Spotify's radio option, which, you know, now you could use for free, I'm pretty sure, on iOS. So basically, what I'd be doing here is just going through songs repeatedly as long as I want. There are no actual stops to it. There's no ads. There's no limit. I could just keep going, as you could see. So it's a very cool and useful tweak if you don't want to pay for something like Spotify or use Spotify at all for that matter. Of course, you know I am a Spotify user, so this this wouldn't really come in handy for me, but it's a very useful tweak if you do want to just, you know, go through iTunes Radio unlimited and endlessly pretty much. The next tweak I want to show you guys is a tweak called Snapper. Now, I dubbed this one as Gaiazo for iOS, and if you guys don't know what Gaiazo is, this is actually a desktop tool for Mac OS X that lets you take screenshots virtually anywhere and immediately opens them in a web browser. Now, while this is a little different, it operates just about the same. So when you download it, you're actually going to assign a gesture through Activator to activate it. And I said top on the right of the status bar, so near the battery and percentage. And as you can see, my screen kind of dim there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little screenshot of my messages icon along with my status bar and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna make a little piece. And you can see it kind of fills in with color there, just like that. And so now I can actually take this and I can move this little screenshot around. So for example, I can go into messages and there it is right there. You can see, so it follows you everywhere you go. And pretty much after that, you just hold down on it and you could choose what you want to do. You could close it. You could save it to your camera roll. You could save it and close it. You could copy it and copy and close. It's that simple. So I'll go ahead and copy it. For example, here, I'll hit copy and close and now I'll double tap, hit paste. And you can see right there, it actually went ahead and pasted it for me. And if I tap on it, you can see there it is in decently high quality. So very quick screen grabbing. If you need screenshots quickly and you want to move them around wherever you go quickly, so you don't have to go in and actually crop it in photos and select it and stuff like that. You could just copy and paste it and move it around very quickly. Very, very well for what I actually do through messages and tweeting and stuff. So I can see this coming handy a ton. Of course, there is a preference pane in settings that will allow you to edit your gestures through action activator as well as shadow and banner when you actually have the official picture taken and then you can of course see here what the directions are tips and uses and stuff like that so this next little tweak that i want to show you guys is a tweak called swipe selection pretty much this is a little tweak that you install if you really don't like the magnifying glass option when it comes to selecting your text. I'm just going to copy this text here real quick so I can quickly edit it. Um, and basically, instead of using this magnifying glass to go through your text and edit it, you go right from the keyboard and you can actually scroll right through all of your text. As you can see what I'm doing there, the little blue line is moving as I do this. So I don't have to use that magnifying glass. Of course, this is a little tweak. You know, it's not much that it adds to it. However, when it comes to websites or copy and pasting anything or editing text right within websites the magnifying glass as you know is not the best option so using this keyboard instead of actually using the magnifying glass is going to come in a lot more handy and in my opinion is a lot more useful and easier to use it's kind of a convenience if you know what I mean the next tweak I'm going to show you guys is another small little tweak really not a big deal but anyways it's this tweak called Arco and it's a it's a very useful tweak I will say that will actually let you know when you're listening to music and how much of your music is left in terms of the song if you guys know after iOS 7 from iOS 6, Apple actually got rid of the little play notification in the status bar. Not sure why. I really liked it. But now you never know if music's playing. Maybe if you have it all the way on low or you're just looking at your phone really quickly. You know what I'm talking about. So, for example, I will go here to Hip Hop Radio on iTunes Radio and I'll start up a song. And as you can see in the very top corner next to the 60%, there's a very, very little play status button. 
and right next to my do not disturb and bad percentage and there's actually a very faint ring around it i'm sorry that i can't get a better clear shot view i have a feeling if i zoom in it's going to go completely out of focus but what it does is it lets you know when a song is playing and how much of it is left you have to have really good eyes for this one quite honestly it adds a little bit more than just having the play notification it actually tells you how far you are in the song by using a little circle for the duration as you can hopefully and kind of see there again in the very very top corner you can see there's that little gray circle beginning to form around the play button as the song continues to go on in terms of how long it is. The next tweak I'm going to show you guys is a little tweak called Spotty Search. And what this does is, well, it's really going to work for you guys if you are premium Spotify members. However, if you are a Spotify user that also uses free just for radio, this will also work too. But I recommend it for premium Spotify users like me. Basically what it does is you go into Spotlight Search on your iPhone and you could search up anything. So I will type in Blurred Lines. For example, maybe I'll type in Robin Thick. Maybe we'll see if we get something there. There we go. So you guys see that that came up, blurred lines right there. So it searches Spotify's entire catalog for you, and you could do up to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and it just keeps going. In terms of how many you want to list, you could see it has artists, albums, and tracks as well and stuff like that. I could also search the web and search Wikipedia. I shut off all the other things to make this easier for you guys to see, like messages, contacts, calendar applications, and stuff like that. So you guys could just see the Spotify stuff. So I could just go right here to the Blurred Lines album. It'll open my Spotify app, and it'll take me right to the Spotify app, and there you go, it pulled up Blurred Lines for me, and I could pretty much just start it from there. It's that simple. Pretty cool little tweak if you're a Spotify member and you just want a quick search. And if you're not a Spotify member, if you're just using free, you could search up a song or artist and base it off of a radio station that you could listen to through Spotify. So the last and final tweak that I wanted to show you guys for this video is a tweak called Classic Badges. Now, if you guys see in the top right corner here, right in my folder, I do have a little notification. I don't know how else I could push a notification to myself on instant right now. But as you can see, it's just a little red circle and it's got the old white outline and this is probably because I'm either using a custom font or maybe it's just a little off but you can see there's a little one there and it quite honestly takes you back to how iOS 6 and older used to look. As you know, in iOS 7, it's just a flat, rounded, red little circle. However, with the white outline and the shadow and everything, this will take you back to the classic feel of iOS 6. So I just downloaded this today, actually, as a little thing to add. I figured some of you would like this. But if you like or enjoy the old iOS 6 notification badges, then this is good for you. So again, it's called Classic Badges, and it will give you iOS 6 notification badges. They just need to work on it a little. As you can see, the number centering is a little bit off. It's a little bit down. I don't know how well you guys can see that in the top right corner. But, you know, I guess it's worth it if it's you're just going to download it and just use it to have that classic feel. You know, you could tie that into classic lock screen. You could tie it into the iOS 6 home screen icons and stuff like that. Really get that old iOS 6 feel. So anyways, guys, there you go. Those are my top 10 iOS 7 City of Tweaks of 2014. If you guys like this video, please leave some comments below on your thoughts. Of course, rate, give this video a thumbs up, and click the subscribe button below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.